The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who have been blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did, for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. And they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> this homily begins with a commercial, which is to suggest that you see a wonderful film that was just released, but probably won't be out there much longer. And so on uh, Leftover Friday, Friday, Black Friday, the other day, for the first time since before COVID, I went to the movies to see this movie entitled Journey to Bethlehem. It's a beautiful story about Mary's betrothal to Joseph, about the Annunciation, the visitation, the birth of Jesus, and the escape of the Holy Family to Egypt. You know, there's a lot of bad stuff and junk from the film industry, but this movie is a great way to prepare for Advent, which is the shortest it could possibly be, three weeks and three hours. So it's worthwhile to support religious enterprises like this and to be inspired by the story that we're all so familiar with, especially one like this that offers a fresh, musical and unique perspective to prepare for Christmas. Journey to Bethlehem. And today we hear about the journey on this Christ the King Sunday, the journey to the kingdom. So the question that this gospel raises is this. What is the worst sin a human being can commit? What is the number one thing that can prevent you or me from entering the kingdom of God. Pope Francis often says that the poor are our passports to heaven. 
The poor are our passports to heaven. And the poor aren't just defined as those who are materially poor, but also encompass those, anyone, who has a need, less than us, materially, spiritually, whatever it might be. And so attending, helping, caring for the poor, however and wherever we find them, is our passport to the kingdom. Without that passport, admission to God's presence is impossible. Is, is impossible. So the great sin of humanity, the worst sin of all, is really indifference. Indifference towards others. And this parable of the sheep and the goats is the only description of the last day, the final judgment, in all of the four Gospels. And it's really about two types of human beings. People who care and people who don't care or really don't care all that much about others. Because what we do, what we don't do to or for others, we do or we don't do for God. And so Matthew portrays this shepherd, and we hear this shepherd theme throughout the first reading and the responsorial psalm, the shepherd that separates the sheep from the goats. Mercy and charity, not human wealth or accomplishment, mercy and charity will be the standards, the only standard, the sole criteria for determining one's entry into the reign of God. Or, to say it another way, at the Last Judgment, God's final choice choices are no more than a ratification of our own choices all along. Meaning, what we're doing now, God will affirm or condemn later. And you know, one of the striking aspects of this parable, as Jesus tells us, is that those who went about doing good for others did so un self-consciously. In other words, they had to be told, it had to be explained to them that when they responded to others, they were serving Christ the King, Christ the Shepherd, Christ the Judge. When did we see you hungry and thirsty? Likewise, the goats were those who don't really show much or any care for others. They had no clue that they failed to see God in their neighbor whoever that neighbor might be. And they had asked the same, when did we see you? I didn't recognize you. So Jesus says we can sin, not just by doing wrong, doing evil things, we can sin by not doing indifference. And as mentioned at the beginning of the Mass, you know, we often say the confidier to prepare ourselves to celebrate, to enter into the Eucharist, and we say, we ask God's forgiveness for the things I have done, Okay, we can categorize them pretty easily. But it's harder to categorize the things that I fail to do, that maybe we fail to do. So in this last judgment scene, Jesus makes this extraordinary pronouncement. There's nothing here about prayer, as important as, as that is. There's nothing here about dogma. There's nothing even here about God in this particular parable. Our prayer... Our faith, our being here today, our coming to Mass, should help to remind us about leaving here and bringing Christ to others, the least ones, whoever that might be. could be somebody we're living with. But coming to church doesn't automatically erase our original selfishness, our human indifference. Attending to others begins to erase our indifference which is humanity's original sin. We come into this world completely selfish. That's why we, that's why St. Augustine uh, came up with this theory, this, this theology of original sin, that we come in and hopefully through the example, the witness of parents, godparents, friends, neighbors, brothers and sisters, we are less selfish and more selfless. At this Mass, in a few moments, we will hear a lively song entitled, Soon and Very Soon. It's an Advent song, but also appropriate for the Feast of Christ the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. 
Well, none of us knows exactly when we will be greeting the king. Hopefully it's a long way off for most, if not all of us. But we all know exactly what the king will ask when we actually do come into his presence. What did you do? Or what didn't you do for others? You know, as important as it is to, you know, to be Catholic, to uh, know that the, uh, the scriptures and the Bible and, and, the, uh, and, and to practice the faith as best we can, uh, this parable gives a strong jolt to those who are heavy on doctrine, but light on ethics and care. And the great surprise in this is that those who thought that they were religious turn out to be not as good as they thought. And those who thought that they had failed, they hadn't given enough, were told they did a better job than they supposed. Maybe your answer, and certainly mine, at this moment, is a mixed bag. A mixed bag in terms of responding to others, responding to God. And that's okay. Because now is always a new moment for God and a new opportunity for us. If we want to inherit the kingdom, the instructions are very simple. Take care of one another concretely. Love the neighbor. It doesn't mean that we have to give away our life savings. It doesn't mean we have to turn our home into a shelter. It doesn't mean we have to sell the car for food for the poor, but it does mean do something. Even if it's just your donation and gift of your time or your talent or the treasure of your presence to folks wherever in whatever venue we encounter others. That's the message, the simple message and the key is the big sin to try to avoid 